Welcome to episode five of the Casting Shadows podcast, an extension or a growth from the Casting Shadows blog, first established in the spring of 2010, drawing from a decade of observations of play before that. Casting Shadows blog later grew into a YouTube channel, now referred to as Runeslinger. And that's the nom de plume under which I communicate online about role-playing games. So this podcast is our latest foray out there into the wilds of the internet to hopefully connect with people who have thoughts about role-playing games, who play multiple role-playing games, or at least who want to play multiple role-playing games, who are just beginning or who are well-established as gamers. I find that by interaction with each other, we get a clearer picture of all the different things that are possible within the umbrella of role-playing games. And so, in this episode five, the topic chosen is going to talk about the umbrella and it will give my answer. And it's it's just my answer. But I think, at least for people who see gaming like I do, it might be an answer that is at least going in the right direction. But that's as much for you to decide as it is for me. And what is today's topic? Today's topic is, what is a role-playing game? Unlike the posts which have been shared on the podcast so far, today's doesn't require time travel and won't have us jumping back and forth between my past perspective and the current perspective or explaining past events which have lost meaning or context in light of the current world that we're living in. This post was published today, not very long ago, actually. So this is October 7th, 2020, and the title of the post is What is a role-playing game? Now, the fundamental thinking that went into this post does take us back in time. It takes us back into the 80s, when I was still in high school, when I was still only playing Dungeons & Dragons. I hadn't had the opportunity to play anything else. And when there was a certain newness to the hobby, and maybe a person was more likely to get the question, well, what is that anyway, you know, kind of thing. And I had found myself explaining that it's not a board game and it's not this other kind of game and it's not just this and it's not just that. And and it occurred to me then what I think a role-playing game is. And that that perception or that insight hasn't really changed in the decades in between then and now. And this... I don't know, realization or decision about what a role-playing game is hasn't seemed terribly important to me, and it doesn't honestly seem terribly important to me now. It's certainly not essential when you are picking up a game and learning how to play it. But it does become more important in two situations. Situation number one, it seems like my answer to what is a role-playing game is one that is dwindling away and possibly disappearing, being overwritten by a completely different perception of what a role-playing game is. And two, if there is dissatisfaction in the group which is tied to this perception, then having this perception is really the only way that you're going to solve it. Because one thing I've noticed about interactions online is that it's easier for us to accidentally assume context for others. Because we feel close together, we can accidentally make the assumption that we're operating from the same localized context. And we can each be doing that at the same time and each be wrong. 
when a word or a situation has some ambiguity to it, we can both assume the other person is making the same assumptions that we are. And we have a conversation that passes by each other, each person thinking that they were understood and each person being incorrect. So like I say, I should probably have written about this a long time ago, but I didn't. And now might be the time. So today was the publication date. This has actually been put together over the last two weeks, piece by piece, as a kind of warm-up writing exercise. I am in the middle of trying to complete a writing project, which I'm looking forward to being able to share with you really soon. But this writing project has been fighting me every step of the way. And so I've been doing lots of little things to to break through the barriers. And uh, little by little, I'm making some success. But I've been using the construction of this post, piece by piece, bit by bit, trying to retain the thread of the idea and make it feel like it was all written in one go. So hopefully that was successful, but we'll see. Anyway, the publication date is today, October 7th, 2020, and this is for the fifth episode of the Casting Shadows podcast. This is What is a Role-Playing Game? I probably should have written about this decades ago, but I didn't. If I had written it when I first thought of it, it would have been in a notebook. If I had later transcribed it, when it seemed more important than it did then or does now, that would probably have been as a word-perfect document for my MS-DOS machine, or worse, PFS write. In the intervening years, a lot has been said on the topic, and given my reach and interests, it likely would not have gone anywhere or accomplished anything of value. I don't care about being an originator of ideas or being the first to have them. I do care about seeing clearly and being a part of sharing useful perspectives and information. Why am I writing it now? For the most part, it feels like it is time to have my thoughts out of my head in a place where I can see them and share them more easily. And with that in mind, let's begin. If there is a single part of a role-playing game text that I hesitate to read, it is the section which sometimes tries to explain, or sometimes just copies what someone else wrote in another game to explain, the nature of an RPG. That I have grown cautious about expecting too much from such sections does not mean that I dislike the question. Far from it. I think that this is a question that any role player should ask themselves if it's one that they can clearly explain the answer to. A lot of these sections in game books, however, seem to obfuscate that their composition comes from surface observation and rely on brevity and a call to action. All you need is you can be a part of with your friends. I came to the answer that I find satisfying a long time ago. This, no doubt, has something to do with having started long enough ago that games were being made with a different set of expectations, and computer RPGs were not yet upon us, though they soon would be. In contrast, sometimes, with our eyes on what is different, we can come to see details that we might miss or never really be exposed to otherwise. My answer to the question of what an RPG is strips things back as far as I can take them, distilling the answer down to what I think are its basic components, and from the combination and recombination of which we might draw a connection to any RPG we might find. More recent explanations I have been encountering in the last 20 years or so do not seem to be able to do that. That gives me some sense that I might be on a good path toward a place I want to go. When I came across Ron Edwards' big model, I felt a sense of connection, like what I was seeing was related to or was a part of what he was seeing. I've said before that I believe Ron has already thought and written about every RPG idea I will ever have. It might not be true, and in this particular area it doesn't seem to be true, but despite that, it feels true. And perception 
is reality. I felt a weaker connection to what I originally misconstrued as the work of the Forge, then later misconstrued to be the work of John Kim, and only recently have learned was primarily the work of Mary Cooner. I had come to similar conclusions as espoused in Cooner's threefold theory on my own, and it was reaffirming to see strangers, removed from me in both space and time, seeing the same things in the same way. GDS and its offshoot GNS were interesting, and I think useful, but not really an answer to a, a what is question. These are more about whys and hows, and that makes them important, but not as much in answering the question at hand in this post. I'll insert uh, an editorial break here at this moment about 2020, from 2020, to say that I bring up this point to emphasize that these thoughts were coming to me independently of what others had done and that I felt a tremendous sense of relief when seeing all or part or, or some or a better version of the thoughts that I had had reflected in the work of others long after. I didn't start looking at this kind of material online until after I'd moved to Korea and uh, had a, a decent internet connection and had the desire to do so. So uh, well after the point even where the blog had started. So that confirmation was very helpful. And while something like the big model directly relates to the topic of this post, what is an RPG, some of its fundamental pieces, like GNS, I feel don't do, do so as much, nor were they intended to. So I wanted to make that clear and have probably only obfuscated it more. And my apologies for that. Let's get back to the post. I keep tabs on ideas and theories developed through actual play, interview, and debate that are mature enough to have dramatic names and a mix of informed and uninformed adherents. Of these, I have found the most in common with distillations of the ideas put forward in a model I am not comfortable pronouncing. I'm going to refer to as Melati. So it's M-E-I-L-A-H-T-I. So, the Melati model. But again, I did not find complete agreement, and for a couple of reasons. I find that the specific focus on the game roles of the players is a problem when defining things at a basic level, what an RPG is, and I find that a focus on diegesis is another point at which that model and mine diverge. In fact, this focus seems to be an idea that is growing, and we're far enough along in the track of RPG development now that well-grounded players in the hobby can actually be too young to have even heard of games which were constructed without it. I was also quite taken with Vincent Baker's juicy statement that RPGs are a conversation. But where that answer seems to go off into how system creatively and interestingly helps make the conversation into a particular game experience, I found myself feeling like we had just driven past a turnoff that was beckoning to me. I'm still not entirely sure about this one, but in interaction with people online, people, I note, who are neither Meg nor Vincent Baker, but who offer up the incomplete statement that RPGs are a conversation in that way that posers do to end conversation, yeah, my response is simply to ask, about what? The silence is often deafening, or worse. We get dragged back to diegesis, but with no one in the conversation knowing or using that word. So, what is my take on the answer? For me, the essence of things is decision-making. I like to phrase it this way. RPGs are about decisions. I do not like to define whose decisions, per se, but I do like to go a bit further by offering support for the statement. An RPG, as I see it, requires one or more people, a context for making decisions, and this is things like a setting and or a situation, a point of view, and a method of arbitration, in other words, the system. If an RPG is a conversation, then ultimately, it is a conversation about decisions made 
unmade, and about to be made. That conversation is one that occurs in the social context created for it, the in-game space, and spills over into the social space within which the in-game space is created and maintained, the out-of-game space. It can last for mere moments, such as over a quick coffee while discussing a future or past session of play, or over dice that are still settling into stillness. It can last for hours, such as when at a session of play. It may or may not include people peripheral to the play of the game, such as an observer who adds to the audience without being a participant. The fun of that conversation is shaped and colored by the context given to it for decision-making, i.e., a fantasy quest, a noir investigation, a high-action space opera, an inevitable ba- breakup, a ghost, unaware that it is one, etc. And by the interaction of its players with that context, which we could see even in solo play, and with each other, or both, as we could see in group play, as both participant and audience simultaneously. An RPG is a game in which fun is had by being able to frame and commit to decisions of various types alone or with other people. I'd like to insert another note from the 2020 perspective looking at earlier today in 2020, and that this jargon of referring to a player of an RPG as both participant and audience. This, I think, is essential, and my exposure to this language comes from my exposure to conversations at Adept Play. I think this is a breakthrough in how we can describe the experience of roleplay. And while it had nothing to do with the framing of this idea, it has everything to do with making this idea better. Okay, let's return to earlier today. (laughs) This very simple definition lets us recognize the commonalities between games like Call of Cthulhu and Fiasco, between a generic rule set and a specific one, between a game for solo play and one for a group. RPGs are about making decisions. These decisions might be about things like what a character does, or, differently, what you would do as the character if you were in their shoes, or, differently still, about what you are going to do. They might be about small things like opening a door or ending an argument. They might be about things of importance. But again, small scale, like to kill or not to kill. All of these small, personal-scale, character-level decisions matter, and for some games, these might be all that the conversation that carries an RPG as its medium of transmission is about. The intention for play and all the conversation about play might never touch on nor need to touch on anything other than this type of decision. What are you going to do? These days, RPGs are seen as a way to be part of a story, This is not required. They might go further than that in a direction away from the character level and on toward or beyond a more authorial view on decision-making. The decisions might instead be made on a larger scale and about elements of story like where and when to insert a new character, or a note of sadness, or a cutscene to other times and places. They might, in other words, be all about the story. They might. This is not required. Critics might point out that it might leave so much room that we might include games like Monopoly and its widespread reports of people role-playing as the shoe or the iron. I invite the critics to note that the people claim to be role-playing and are deriving some fun from doing so, either as a solo expression of play within the greater context of that game or as a shared one, including specific shoe-related actions, characterizations, and dialogue. Is Monopoly an RPG? Well, do you play it like one? Should you care? I'm not sure that you should. I hope that you will. 
but in the day-to-day -day play, it might not come up all that often in a way that will be important. I do like to focus on the practical, and for me, an understanding of how things work, theory, goes hand-in-hand -in, -hand in an eternal loop with making things work, practice, so that implementation improves to the benefit of all participants. We play, we have successes and failures, we assess our play, we make adjustments and refinements, and that cycle continues without stopping. If I can see that an RPG is ultimately about making decisions, then what will that mean when I find that in practice a group is being denied the sort of opportunities to make the types of decisions that they want? Won't that mismatch of intentions lead me to help that group make the adjustments that they need in order to have more fun? This sort of idea is useful on the large and general scale, and usually less useful on a more granular scale, like how a badly written rule on page 42 can be interpreted, or what to do about Todd, who keeps promising to show up but always flakes on the game. It is still a useful thing to consider, though, especially when you make it personal. If an RPG is an opportunity to make decisions, what RPGs do you choose to play? And what do you do when you play them? P.S. I do not care one way or another if people think that Monopoly can be construed as an RPG or not. That said, I'll be completely unsurprised if the big takeaway from this recording is that it is. As this entire post is almost entirely commentary, it feels like overkill to have a specific commentary section about the post. So, I will restrict this section to just a few short commentary-like comments. The first being that when examining my answer, my definition of what is a role-playing game, there will likely be a tendency among people with a lot of exposure to such answers that it is too open, too general, allowing for too many games to be included. And this is not something that I will try to deny. I would just like to point out that a lot of other theories somehow manage to leave out important games. And the stricter our interpretation of these theories, the more games that can be left out, either legitimately or just by semantic wordplay. So what I'm asking is to consider at the beginning the idea by, as we like to say in my circle of friends, thanks to the constant reminders uh, by the ever-positive and ever-helpful Eloy Centrone. Listen charitably. Okay. That's it. That's my answer. My answer to what is a role-playing game. If you're not satisfied with it, that's cool. And I invite you to come up with one of your own. Don't crib or copy one of the existing ones. Don't latch on to one as a fan and part of your personal gamer identity. Actually, sally forth and tilt against the windmill that is this question. But anyway, whether you do that or not, thank you for listening, and I hope that you will come back and listen to more and different types of posts on the Casting Shadows podcast, which is connected, as we've said before, to the Casting Shadows blog, found at castingshadowsblog.com, which shouldn't be a surprise to anybody, and the YouTube channel, Runeslinger. Until the next time, take care.